Plague, war, death. These are what await the unwitting observer of the spectral riders who make up the Wild Hunt. If you've managed to escape to tell the tale, that is. Stories of the Wild Hunt appear all through Western and Northern Europe, each tale sporting its unique quirks. Sometimes the riders are heroes, devils, ghosts, or even elves. They're sometimes malevolent forces who abduct the innocent, or they're tricksters pulling the unsuspecting into their fold. And in some stories, they just piss off Geralt of Rivia. But one thing remains constant. These Bakian huntsmen and their howling dogs take victims. So tonight, around our campfire, I have a story of one of the unlucky ones. A man who lived too brazen, too selfishly, and much too fast. And the story of his dogs, whose howls would come to mean only one thing. Doom. Thanks so much to Incogni for helping to keep people's personal data personal. At the turn of the 14th century, in the town of St. Germans, near the River Lyre, lived a jolly friar named Dando. He was a boisterous fellow, known for his booming laugh and quickness to forgive anyone who came to confession. For how could he judge others when he himself was a sinner? Because above all else, Dando loved to indulge. And while he was a heavy drinker and was often caught in a stupor off of sacramental wine, it was really food that was his true vice. He would only eat the highest quality meals, and in lean months, he might even dip into the church coffers to buy quality meat from neighboring towns. But truly, more often than not, Dando actually caught the game himself. For the priest was also an excellent huntsman. And drink always in hand, he would scour the countryside relentlessly for the most quality game. However, in the ecstasy of the chase, he was never one to pause and consider things like whose rabbit he caught or where his horses were trampling. He just rapturously followed his baying dogs. And since they had no respect for any kind of boundary, many gardens and cornfields were destroyed in the wild rush of his hunt, meaning that what followed his hunting party was not only destruction, but many curses from the locals. Damn him! They would cry. And when something like that is said enough, sometimes the universe, or something more sinister, will listen. One Sunday morning, Dando's dogs caught a strong scent on the wind. As his hounds began to howl, excitement rose within the priest, and he stopped his religious preparations immediately. He then locked the church doors tight, ordered his horses to be saddled, and rounded up as many eager sports people as he could find. Oh yeah, the hunt was, quite literally, on. It was a resounding success. As the hours and drinks flew by, Dando and his riotous party caught all manner of game. Birds, rabbits, even a great stag, all fell to the priest and his ilk before the rise of the midday sun. Oh, it was exhilarating, but also exhausting work. Then, when Dando went for another swig of liquid refreshment, he'd found he'd already emptied his flask. So he halted his group in the middle of some misty moorlands and asked for a refill from his party. But to his dismay, they had already finished all the alcohol they had set off with. Though, in fact, most had been drunk by Dando himself. One way or another, the tipsy priest bellowed, I shall have a drink, even if I have to go to hell for it. And it was at that moment, a shrouded hunter stepped into view from the edge of the mist. Dando eyed them warily, not recognizing this hunter as any of his regular companions. Actually, had this hunter even set out with them when they'd started their day? Mm. Then suddenly, the mysterious rider drew a golden drinking horn from under their cloak and wordlessly offered it to Dando. Never one to turn down a drink, wherever it was from. He snatched the horn and proceeded to down the whole thing in a single chug, without even asking the rider their name. Uh... Rude. Dando wiped his mouth with the back of his hand and passed the drinking horn back to his new companion. Ooh, come to think of it, he'd actually never tasted a drink so sweet. <laughs> with a measured laugh, Dando was about to ask the hunter where he'd found this veritable nectar of the gods. But before Dando could speak, he stopped cold. Wait a moment. Did the hunter have red skin? And were those horns under his cloak? My god, was this man taking the best game for himself? Now, to you or I, those first things, the red skin and horns, would have probably been the bits to have been most concerned about, right? Not to mention divine ambrosia, in trade for a few rabbits, seemed like more than a fair bargain. But the thing about Dando is his greed ran deep. He began to protest. That game was his. Who did this deformed rider think he was? But those screams fell upon deaf ears as the hunter simply secured the bounty to his horse and mounted up. Oh, <laughs> this disrespect was just too great. 
So Dando, in a drunken rage, rolled from his horse and charged clumsily at the hunter. But with a startlingly nimble move, the rider turned his black horse aside, and Dando fell face first into the muddy ground. This, of course, only proved to anger the priest further, who screamed in rage. Aided by his attendants, Dando was quickly brought back to his feet. I go to hell after them, but I'll get them from you, warned Dando as he lurched forward again. And so you shall, growled the hunter, before seizing Dando by the collar, lifting him from the ground and placing him easily on his horse behind him. In a flash, the rider's dark steed dashed away from the group, its hooves striking literal fire with every step, and Dando's dogs barking furiously, following behind. Before long, the rider came to the bank of the liner, and it seemed sure that the hounds would catch them at the river's edge. Yet Dando had no chance to escape. Without breaking stride, the steed made an incredible leap far out over the water. But as it plummeted down, there was no splash. From the horse's flaming hooves, the water of the lake boiled away around the terrible steed. Other hunters of Dando's party who had followed the hounds had only a brief moment to see Dando's shocked face as from the riverbed, each of his hunting dogs made the same incredible leap behind the hunter's horse. But the stillness of the water lasted only a split second, for as fast as it had cleared, the river came rushing back, engulfing the horse, riders, and every one of the dogs that had dove in behind it. And as it so often goes in tales such as these, Dando and his dogs were never seen again. But sometimes, if you listen carefully, early on Sunday mornings, the baying of dogs can be heard on the moorlands, as if in eager pursuit of game, and those foolhardy enough to look have reported a ghostly horde, led by a devilish rider with a gold drinking horn. So perhaps Dando got what he wanted all along, and he's forever part of the eternal hunt, sweeping up other rash sinners in its wake. Or maybe he should have been more careful with what he wished for. Maybe Dando isn't a rider at all, and his soul has been swept away with his dogs forever chasing the rider to find him. But whatever the outcome, if you happen to hear barking across the misty English countryside at a time where there probably shouldn't be any, maybe don't go investigating. Because if you do, Dando's dogs might lead you to a similar fate. And, you know, speaking of deals with devils, seems like every day there's another article about a new data breach at a company that definitely has all of my information. Ugh, and this is like the sixth robocall I've gotten today. Wait, hold on. What do you mean you need confirmation to open a new bank account? I didn't open a new- Ah, dear viewer, that used to be me before I signed up for Incogni. Seriously, between the rise of data brokers collecting and selling your data, and the uptick of people search sites putting your personal info out on the internet for all to see, it's now pretty impossible to keep your private data completely private on your own. But now with Incogni, I don't have to worry about any of that. Because after a very speedy sign-up, they went to work bombarding these shadowy parasites with requests to remove all of my personal info. Plus, they keep the pressure on, continually citing local laws to make sure my data stays removed for good. And I can keep track of the entire process through their intuitive real-time dashboard. Oh, would you look at that? 43 requests already completed. Heck yeah! So, if you want to keep your personal data, you know, your personal data, you can get 60% off Incogni by visiting incogni.com slash extra credits and using our code extra credits. Or to save some time, you can click right here to get Incogni. And once you've ruined a data broker's day, be sure to check out another of our videos here. Thanks so much to Michael Hoggett, Kuya Koi, Joseph Lane, Izzy Coin, Dominic Valenciana, Arkalite Games, Angelo Valenciana, and Ahmed Ziad Turk. 